Hi everybody! Side quests and RPGs have been a hot topic for a while now, especially with the recent release of Final Fantasy XVI. It kind of seems to me that like half the game population says that they're the best side quests ever, and then the other half is like, no, this is just mindless busy work, and I guess me? I kind of fall somewhere in the middle here. I do think that the stories presented in Final Fantasy XVI side quests were great, but at the same time, they just kind of felt like, you know, samey. And the rewards for them, well, those really just kind of sucked. It was always like some bullshit crafting crap. Whatever happened to getting like new summon monsters or new pieces of equipment that you would, you know, actually use and equipped? Or something like some neat accessories like the offering or the golden hairpin? And that is what I want to talk about today, the death of side quests in JRPGs. Side quests have always been a thing with RPGs. Even with the very first Dragon Warrior, they had them there, with that rocky cave, as well as finding Erdrick's armor over in Hawksness. And just like every RPG did back in the day, whatever Dragon Quest did, other RPGs just copied wholesale. The very first Final Fantasy game on the NES really only had one side quest of note, but it was actually a really frickin' good one. You might even think that it's mandatory, but Class changing with Bahamut is actually a side quest. You had to fly your airship over to the Cardia Islands, where you were tasked with fetching a rat's tail from the Castle of Ordeals. And once you've completed that task, Bahamut upgraded your classes, which was just an amazing reward. That is how side quests used to be. You had to go out of your way and off the beaten track to find them, and they included towns and communities, as well as their own separate dungeons to explore. And once you completed them, you were rewarded fantastically. There weren't a lot of side quests, but the ones that were there were definitely worth it. Let's fast forward to Final Fantasy IV. There are three main side quests here. You have the Land of the Summoned Monsters, the Sylph's Cave, and the Lair of the Father. All three of these areas not only give you great rewards, but also additional storyline. The first one that you can tackle, the Land of the Summoned Monsters, allows you to spelunk deep into a cave filled with treasures and unique monsters not seen anywhere else. And then, whenever you do reach the bottom, you're thrust into an entire town that looks nothing like any place else on the planet, and it's just chock full of lore on all of the summons, the monsters that inhabit the world, and even extra backstory for Rydia. And if that wasn't enough, there's even more treasures and unique equipment in the shops to be had, as well as powerful summons to acquire after some of the hardest boss fights in the game. The Cave of the Sylphs is really similar, except there, whenever you reach the bottom, you find out the fate of your martial artist friend Yang, wake him up from his slumber, and recruit the Sylphs onto your side. Then, the Lair of the Father is Bahamut's obligatory appearance, and his lair is filled to the brim with ridiculously powerful equipment and enemies, as well as the most powerful summon in the game as your reward for defeating him. The fifth game is also kind of side quest city, with summons and secrets tucked away here and there, as well as just little special scenes that you can stumble upon, like that scene between Lena and Ferris at Tycoon Castle. Not to mention the third world is pretty much just nothing but side quests. I mean, really, once you get your party back together, you can head into the end zone whenever you want to. It's completely up to you whether or not you want to find all the hidden jobs or collect the ultimate equipment that's scattered around the third world. Similarly to the fifth game, the same thing can be said about the sixth where the world of Ruin is really just one huge side quest. In the same way, I mean here, if you really wanted to, Celeste, Sabin, and Setzer can take on Kefka from the moment that they board the Falcon. But let's just say here for the sake of argument that you do end up collecting all of your characters in the world of Ruin. There's still more separate side quests to do here, like climbing the Tower of Fanatics to get the gem box, or getting eaten up by a Zone Eater, only to find an entire dungeon inside of him, as well as a super secret character. And speaking of secret characters, there's our little yeti friend hiding over in the snowfields. There's even that cute little dress-up scene with Gao, whenever he wants to meet his crazy father. But I would really be remiss if I didn't mention my absolute favorite side quest in the Final Fantasy series. Just doing something as mundane as moving Figaro Castle will hit an object and then the castle will stall. So you wonder what's going on and you go out to explore, only to find a cave connected to a long-lost thousand-year-old ancient castle, where you're shown glimpses from the War of the Magi, and afterwards you garner fantastic rewards like Odin and the Offering. 
I could really talk all day long about how great side quests were back in the day, but let me try to get to my point here. Back when, side quests weren't just, you know, go here, talk to this guy, fight this group of monsters. Okay, you're done, come back. Here's your crafting bullshit that you're never gonna use as your great reward. But it really does seem that that's what side quests have devolved into. I mean, at least most recently and egregiously in Final Fantasy XVI. Yeah, many of these side quests do have great story attached to them, and they do a wonderful job of fleshing out your party members as well as the more important NPCs that you come across. However, not a single solitary one introduces anything remotely similar to what you saw back in the SNES days. You're never really shown like a brand new town, or a brand new dungeon, or even giving anything really all that useful equipment-wise. It is the exception, not the rule, whenever a side quest gives you something important, such as the ability to ride a chocobo, or upgrading your potion capacity, or even giving you a new crafting recipe. Maybe like 5% of the side quests total give those good rewards, but the other 95% is just talking to some guy, hearing about how bandits are harassing the town, and then going off to beat him up just to come back and get your magic ash. You know, that great crafting crap reward. It's so valuable to you when if you already have, you know, a thousand other piles of magic ash. Ugh, I hate crafting. It ruins everything it touches. But that's another rant for another time. Either way, maybe it is the introduction of crafting that has ruined side quests. Or at least, you know, ruined the rewards for side quests. Maybe it's the lack of imagination or laziness on the developer's part. Or maybe it's some suit up in a boardroom saying, oh, don't make that an actual in-game side quest, save that one for DLC instead. Or maybe it's just a consequence of the HD generation. I can't exactly pinpoint it, but all told, it's really led to side quests being so crummy and just so sad. I remember as a kid, thinking about how cool games were going to be on newer systems, and they really did evolve for a great while. Then, sometime around the PS3, they just came to a standstill. And now, here we are. Along with the devolution and death of side quests, there's also a loss of that joy of discovery. Nowadays, with everything being so tracked and marked up to the nth degree in your in-game maps, there really is no room left for just discovery. Let me just be old here for a minute as I go back to 4th grade and Dragon Quest 3 on the NES. Right from the get-go in Eliahan, you could choose to go to the Tower of Majima from the cave on the promontory, or go there from the hidden passage south of Reeve. Then, whenever you hit Romali, you could decide for yourself where to go. Do you want to go north and save the cursed village of Noeannuals? Or what about beating up Kandar and grabbing the crown back for the King of Romali? Or do you just ignore all their problems and head south to Isis? The choice was completely up to you. You could do what you wanted, when you wanted to. Once you do finally get the ship, you're told to go and find six orbs, but you're not told where they are. It's up to you to sail around the world, talk to people, and piece together hints in order to find those orbs. I really do think that Dragon Quest III would have lost a lot of the magic that it had if the second that you did get a ship, some map opened up, and then stars appeared, and it said, Hey, you need to go to these exact six places, because here is where you're going to find the orbs. If that had happened, you would have just kind of ended up making like a beeline for those six locations and ignored everything else. Thankfully though, Dragon Quest III did not do that. Instead, they made sure that you found joy in discovery, as they interspersed side quests all throughout the game. Many of those could have just been like random towns that you just kind of stumble across and check out, or a cave here and there that simply exists just for cool treasure. It really does help make a game into a living, breathing world. But, and this is key, you only knew about where to go and what to do if you took the time to speak to the NPCs and learn about their problems. Nowadays, though, developers are hell-bent on saying that NPCs aren't necessary, so they take them out, or they make it so that you can't even talk to them. And it's no wonder that you can't. I mean, why would you or should you waste your time with the NPCs whenever developers instead insist on putting a star on top of all the people that you need to talk to anyway? Whatever happened to the joy of discovery? That sense of accomplishment? People complain all the time of JRPGs devolving into nothing but fetch quest, but the developers themselves only have themselves to blame for that, because by labeling each and every person that you need to talk to, 
in the order that you need to talk to them pretty much just turns the game into nothing but a fetch quest. And again here, it's just yet another death, but this time it's the death of discovery. Now, at the end of the day, this video is not here to say that Final Fantasy XVI isn't a good game. And it really isn't just to call out one specific game either, because many JRPGs are like this today. But I am specifically saying it because it's just the most recent offender. It just spoon-fed you from everything so clearly marked, and it kind of forced you to go from point A to point B with no deviation whatsoever. And what's worse is, there really are no rewards for deviating from that set path either. Maybe if there actually was some, you know, decent treasure to be found, or a neat town to stumble across that sold different equipment, or an abandoned mine to delve into with some sweet treasure, then yeah, I would go off the beaten path and I would explore. But unfortunately, it just doesn't. I'm sure that nothing that I say here will really change anything, and that this is just the world that we live in now, but I just do wish that we could return to a time where instead of having like 100 crummy side quests, we instead got 10 really good high quality side quests. Because with them, it really is much more about quality than it is quantity. I for one do not want to see a million side quests pop up on my screen whenever I know that they're all just kind of going to be the exact same thing with the same crappy rewards. Instead, I would much rather do 10 really solid, high quality character quest type side quests. Maybe even like those found in the end of Karno Trigger. Now that was a game that did everything right. Why can't we just go back to those times? They did it right in the 90s, why can't they do it right now? So I guess I've said my piece on this subject. But I would like to hear what all of y'all think about it, so please let me know in the comments. I would love to get a discussion going on about the subject, because I do think that it needs to be said, and it needs to be heard, and it needs to be out in the open. And if we don't speak up about it, then nothing's going to change. And again, if you like what I do on the channel, please head on over to the Patreon and sign up for early access to my videos and behind-the-scenes photographs. The link to it is in the video description. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.